How we doing, traders? How we doing? Welcome and welcome to the, At The Close. Starting up a little bit early, but going to go through some stocks for you. Going to look in some gambling plays. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome. All right, guys, let me check my audio volume here. Let me get a little bit louder so you guys can pick me up. Looks like I got Aaron Bry calling me right quick, right quick. But hey, going to have to put him on hold right quick. Um. Let's see. Let's see. It looks like uh, Spencer is still going, but it looks like he'll be wrapping up in a second or two. He's looking at ARC. I'll start looking at some of the stocks that I want to look at for the day and definitely pull up the gappers and big movers of the day. So welcome, welcome, guys, to At The Close. Looks like we're starting to get some people to leak through. Um, looks like we got some people on Facebook joining us up, but let's see. Spencer should be wrapping up. Give me one second. Let me get Spencer to wrap up here. All right, guys. So it looks like my man uh, Spencer is still looking at some uh, Kathy ETFs. So I'm going to wait to get started at least on, on some of the stocks that I'm going to look at. But let's just look at some of the movers of the day on the session. Uh, look at this. Look at this company up 46% penny stock trading here. So let's let's keep looking and see what else we're seeing. SOS, uh, this is one that actually pulled back. Looks like it's going up with some uh cryptocurrency plays but it doesn't look too bad now it's holding popped up below above the eights that's what i would like to see it close today above eight and it doesn't look the worst there sos what's going on guys darren darren gnog we'll definitely get into gnog in a second so hey do me a favor guys if you guys are excited to end the day with me and, and start going through some of these stocks, smash the like button, hit the subscribe bell below, hit the share button, let everyone know. Let's talk some stocks. If you got some tickers you want me to take a look at before I get started at what I really wanted to look at today, definitely know in the chat. Let me know, guys. What's going on? All right, all right. Looks like I might have uh, confused Spencer a little bit. I might have confused Spencer a little bit, guys. I think Spencer thinks that I was going to join him on the ETF show. But really, I'm on at the close. So going to have to pull Spencer in a second. But hey, we'll, we'll keep running through here. Keep running through some stocks here. What else we got? We got MGNI being mentioned by Adam there. Daniel with the sundial life. Uh, let's take a look at some of these tickers, MGNI, and one of my baby, uh, one of my favorite industries, really, um, which would be programmatic ads. I've been talking about PubM, which is a new IPO that is in the same sector. This one, I would look for a little bit of a pullback, but man, where where you might see this company at the end of the year, you never know. This company actually went from a rip out of like seven or eight dollars from October. And it, it looks to me like, man, I mean, 
it, it hasn't looked back towards that 15. So even this opportunity at 36 looked interesting on MGNI. All right, guys, let me just check on my man Spencer to figure out what we're going to do today. Um, if we switched on over or not, I think he's still on uh, ETFs talking some Kathy. So give me two seconds, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to put the big uh, this movers right here, movers list right here. You guys go ahead and let me know what you guys want me to take a look at next. Let me get over to Spencer. All right, guys, it looks like Spencer wrapped up, so we're good to switch on over. I see the people coming on in. You guys smashed the like button. Let's start flowing through some of these. All right, so I was going to go into my stocks first, but hey, why not make it about you guys? Hey, you guys want to talk about some stocks here? Let's let's keep running through here. I know Sundial was mentioned by Daniel. Don't want to leave him out, Daniel. Uh, I like the little soccer picture. I'm not sure who that is in the background. It looks... I, I, I got it. the picture's a little small there, but let's take a look at Sundial here. SNBL uh, DL up 13% today, but conference calls, guys. Conference calls scheduled in three days. Um, looks like it got confirmed in two days now. So after the close on the 17th. Um, but looks like why is it moving? Because shares are trading higher after the company announces a 50 50 joint venture with SAF Group. Um, I like some cannabis plays, but I'm not really interested too much in Sundial. I at least know a little bit more about their business, and I just don't see it there. Um, but let's go ahead and let's keep running through here. Let's see what other uh, tickers are being mentioned. I'm seeing multiple times KMPH. So let's go ahead and take a look. Ram, Chad, I see you guys. I see you. KMPH. All right, so we're, we're talking some pharmaceutical here. Um, let, let's take a look here. Let's see what the daily chart says and, and see what we got on the intraday. Um, so daily chart has a, a nice little pop out over this $10 level, guys. So draw a horizontal line here. And, and if I draw it closer towards that $10 level where this kind of last rip out happened in November, we're back above that level. So now I'd want to see if we could pull back closer towards that 10 or pull back closer towards this 11, if we can really start driving on up and getting back up there. Let's see what the recent catalyst is in this stock. See if there's any uh, recent news or anything here. Let, let's see what it looks like. There's some options trading there. looks like there was a halt. Um, so definitely a, a strong move when this one popped up here. Uh, looks like, Looks like this is a a, a, tw a Twitter Twitter stock here, guys. It looks like this a lot of people are mentioning this one on Twitter. Um, I don't know too much about KMPH. I've traded it before, but day trading, and it looks to me more like that's probably what's going on here. Let's take a look on the one minute, see if we can see a pop. Yeah, you see this pop, guys, around uh, 14, so around 2, 229 here. It, it really just shot up, got up there to 1239s, came back down towards 10, uh, 1070s, and, and definitely a, a very volatile stock there in KMPH. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's keep running through here. MGNI pullback date. Hey, uh, I think it is doing a little pullback. I like the industry like I talked about if you weren't here yet. So definitely I like that one. Mitch, it, it's Vivi's stock. Oh, there you go. Well, uh, hey, Vivi's in, in in Brazil right now celebrating, living life up. So definitely smash the like for Vivi. If she definitely gave you that one, guys, smash the like button. Give her some love and, and let her know on her Twitter that, that the KMPH is moving. And let her know. Enjoy, enjoy that Brazil life. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and let's get into what I wanted to talk to today um, and then – We'll let Spencer join up in a little bit. Um, so one thing that I wanted to talk to is is about some sports, man, and, and some sports gambling plays. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. I thought that it'd be best to kind of explain you a, a little bit about what I think really the global market size is. So I'm going to show you guys here an investor presentation. 
Um, this is a, this is on bets. All right, guys. So bets is an ETF in the in the betting industry. Um, B E T Z. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to take a look at some of their holdings in a second, but let's take a look at the opportunity that presents themselves and they kind of present it well here in their investor deck. So shout out to bets. Um, this is from round Hill sports. Um, they definitely support us. And my man, Will Hershey's, uh, has been on Spax attack before. So if you guys know him, definitely give him a shout out on Twitter. All right, let's keep going at here. So when we talk about the global gaming industry, you know, we, we think about that evo evolving business going into online business, right? Because really that's what I'm paying attention to mostly. It's not necessarily like these casinos that are actually going to get people in it, but more along the online business, right? So the online gambling uh, market size is said to, uh, to grow about double the size from 2019 to 2023. But really, I think I think this is just the beginning, you know. And I think they even are being kind of, uh, how would we say, it? Um, kind of kind of early on those predictions because those predictions were before when we didn't have certain states and they're kind of expecting. And that's the hard part of this industry is that you you never know when the next revenue driver is really going to come, when the next state's going to go legal here. Um, but definitely. Morgan Stanley expects over 75% of U.S. sports betting revenue will come from bets placed online by 2025. So that means that we're definitely going to have to pay attention to some of these sporting plays. So you never know what ends up happening and, and where this is, but definitely the market and the opportunity. Nehem said $60 billion. Jeffrey's on the lower side at $20 billion. I think I'm going to be sticking closer towards that high-end towards that need him in, in 60 billion. Um, but definitely, you know, this is going to be interesting. And really, it's all about that legalization and how state by state we get legal. I know Florida is thinking about it right now. I know they put in papers for New York. Um, and, and we're going to have to pay attention, you know. Um, we could talk about Penn. So I want to get into Penn and some of the ones that we're going to get into. So let's actually start looking at some charts and, and determining where the winners are and what and what do we see on the charts right so let's go let's go ahead and let's get into pen here um already doing great you know there was mentioned here guys that we could get an ad uh the company following the announcement that it will join the s p 500 and this is this is this is crazy guys when you think about it this is a stock that if you look at it year over year and you looked uh, until the March time, got it, got as low as 375, now up there to 140. What a massive opportunity this pen has been, really. Because if we look at the chart, holy moly, look at that rise, and and we'll we'll see how it reacts. Um, it could react very similar. Um, it could come down a little bit, and then when it actually joins the S&P rip, that's how Tesla moved. But really, we we'll have to take a look at it. Definitely pen a leader here, and we'll see how it continues moving. Uh, next one I wanted to talk to you about is DraftKings. But uh, no, no better way to talk about DraftKings than to point out my man, Chris Ketchy, you know, here uh, talking about it, guys. DraftKings can launch sports betting faster than competitor. Arc Fund says in bullish take. Um, so um, one thing that we noticed, and, and then we noticed this on the last Arc webinar, that they were talking about sports betting, and they were also talking about how DraftKings is it's really in the position to take a lead here. You know, as demand for sports betting increases and several states get that revenue, we're going to see how DraftKings partnerships with even like let's say um, streaming capabilities, how they really bring betting to the everyday watcher of sports. So. Out there, if you guys like any of these sports sports stocks, please let me know in the chat. Let me know what's your favorite sports uh, stock here, sports betting play. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here at the DraftKings chart, and we can take a look also at some other players here. All right, so DKNG, if we look at DKNG, we see a rip out to 68. Man, this one has gone up sideways ripped out gone up 
down, sideways, ripped up, gone up, sideways, ripped out. As you guys can see, the trend continues on DKNG, and it, I don't think anybody would have gave it a, a $70, $80 price target a year ago, but look at it now, up there to 70 and it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on this one. I know a lot of people, it uh, looks like some people are mentioning some SPACs, my super SPAC, man. I, yeah, we could talk about that one, but I, I just want to get into a little bit of, of ones that actually have some acquisition here. So let's keep running through here. Maybe I'll touch a little bit of HZONAB. Can't blame you for bringing that one up. Uh, Penn is the number one hold in the long-term portfolio. Hey, I can't blame you, Dipper. Um, if you got that dip by, then that's not a bad one to have. Uh, Pam talking about Zynga. I might touch that one for you at the end, Pam. To tell you the truth, Pam, it's on my watch, on my radar. I haven't gotten in it, but it's on my radar. Um, another one here, guys. So RSI coming out with great earnings. And, and look at this chart has as we just come quickly off of that support. Another one I'd point out is GAN. This was my best one of my best trades for 2021 and was my first story stock. And that was when back when it was down here, uh, kind of closer towards this right, right before the beginning of the year time. And now look at it. It's up there to thirties, 28 have really good fundamental outlook and you're seeing it, you're seeing it pay off. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how these companies keep getting with different sports betting plays like Fubo. I'm, I'm seeing Fubo being mentioned here multiple times. Um, you know, I, Hey, I can't blame you guys for looking at Fubo. It's going to be interesting how they do their partnership with Balto sports and seeing if they can get betting, you know, out to us first. But of course with all the betting, you know, especially at the time right now, I don't know about you guys, but if you guys are March Madness fans, if you guys are college fans, if you guys like betting, I mean, this is one of the biggest times to betting because you're going to get some upsets. You're going to get some opportunities. And, man, uh, you, you can't really get better betting during March Madness time. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, another one that I'd like to mention before we move on is GNOG, uh, Golden Nugget. Golden Nugget's going to be interesting because it's right off the support, bouncing off, looking good, looking like it wants to head right back up there to that 26. And this is why it's always important to know your kind of your levels. This opening close on the 29th uh, had a had a open of 1410. And really, we held those 14 so well when we swung right back down and right back up. RSI earnings definitely helping this one push right back up. But it will be interesting because – uh, GNOG is kind of more in the gaming play, um, like you know, casinos, but it's going to be interesting to see if this one can also just continue to run with the industry. All right, so you, you took triple D advice and sold pen this morning, Big Bill. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, one thing I love about triple D is that he will take his profits. But one thing we'll always say, and it's like hindsight 2020, just the same way I say it to me, right? Sometimes you sell too early. Hey, no, that that worked for him. That worked for him, Mitch. Yeah, it could work. Pen, pen, could work. pen opened at the high of the day. Opened at one. Opened at one thirty eight. Went to one forty two and and sold off. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see in a week if Penn's not at like a uh, hundred and fifty. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it goes though but that's how it goes hey and 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 then that's how you ne you never know when you sold correctly i mean you, you know because you got profits probably and that's that that's the name of the game right i mean just to make some profits and and so triple d knows that game and let's just say like he said the other day he's only had one losing day of the year so i, I can't blame the guy that's taking the profits you know what's funny about that is he wasn't even he wasn't even in a bad mood he was in like a jovial mood he yep. was like, he was like, oh, I'm, I got crushed yesterday. That's all right. <laughs> I'll get back That's on the horse. Right. I'll all get right. back on the horse and do it again today. I mean, when you got he wasn't one even mad. When you got one day, I mean, can you really be upset? Well, nah. it's just like like there are days when Dennis comes in and he's like on the wrong side and he's like really pissed off. <laughs> and um, because he like there was news that went against him or whatever. Um, and he's like not in a good mood. But I didn't even I couldn't even tell that he had lost money. Until he, he he told me because because he just wasn't even that upset about it. He was like, "Oh, all right, I, 
you know, lost lost money yesterday. Whatever. Well, you got to know when you're right. You got to know when to hold them and know when to yeah, fold them. That's it. I'll tell you one right now. I'm not right on AMC, man. AMC. Have you seen this thing today? I have. As a matter of fact, I have. <laughs> you going to the movies anytime soon, Spencer? No. We we talked about it, and I was like. <laughs> Why, like, look at this. I, I, why would I? I would be going just to go, just to spend money. Like, there's no, there's no point. There's not even movies to watch. That's the that's the other point. Is <laughs> what, what, what would I see? What would I see? Uh, you, you're gonna watch the Last Dragon. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the Last Dragon is gonna be on on the top list of Spencer's no. to watch list. No. You know, no. I mean, I just don't under I don't understand. You know, sometimes when you don't understand, you gotta stay away. This is clearly a stock I stay away from. Yep. I'm not gonna short it, not gonna long it, don't understand it, stay away. <laughs> That's what I do, guys. And and it helps because if you don't understand it and you're fighting kind of a trend and you, and you just see it ripping on up, that's how you really start getting in the world of hurt. Because l- let's say you the story, if you're going off the story, you'd probably be shorting AMC, not buying AMC up here. But hey, as you guys can see, there's clearly s- some kind of sentiment. Wait, Easy Mike says that, like, I guess so. A, a Chinese uh, majority shareholder exited their stake. I mean, why? Why wouldn't you? This is basically free money. If you're long AMC, this is this is like this is like free money right now. Like I mean, they, the run up allowed them to convert. Like it allowed Silver Lake to get out of uh, all this debt. They held AMC's debt. They just converted it into stock and sold it. I mean, it's 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 if you're long AMC, congratulations. I, I I can't imagine why you wouldn't sell. As much as my opinion. Uh, it, it's interesting. I mean, it's the same to say if if GME is going to raise some money, right? I mean, <laughs> it, I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I've actually, you know, I, I can say, you know, you got to be, you got to know when you're wrong on stock. I, I've said AMZ is going to zero. It doesn't look like it, but yeah. Can, can we talk about one that um is working out for for Luke and I? And yeah. I don't know, I don't know, Dennis, if, uh, if he still owns it, but uh, Ford. Have you seen Ford lately? Yeah, the Ford. It's been, it's been moving every every other day, every like every few days, or maybe every week. It breaks another key level like a, like another whole dollar it goes up mm-hmm. like a, another handle like we're in the 13s right now at this rate we'll be up to the 14s by the end of the week and i heard like negative news lately i didn't wasn't there a delay on the mock e <laughs> i didn't even hear about that <laughs> oh you see what's up spencer gotta have that news on on deck man on deck so I heard, I heard like they were doing incentives because they were late on it and everything. They're they're trying to keep it, keep it, get it out. So we'll see what happened today. I mean, at the open, looked like we got a little bit of a washout, and now we're coming back down. But we'll we'll keep an eye on on Ford. I think at the end of the day, it's just about how the, you you seen these this pivot by almost every single car company to go electric. Oh well, yeah, Spencer? they have to. They have to. Yeah. They have to. There's, do you even see it? Do you even see commercials about other cars anymore? Um. Yeah, probably. I don't know. You have to think about it, right? Do I? I don't know. It, Bueller. That, I think that that says enough, right? If you have to think about it, before it used to be like, man, I saw every single car, every single gasoline car that was going to come out in a commercial. Yeah. Now yeah. you don't see that. You just don't. It's just not the same anymore. So that's that's the pivot, and the pivot started, and I don't think it's going to turn away. It's just going to be all about the race, the race to electric. Yep. So. Yep. All right, three twenty-five. We'll have uh, Joel on in about five minutes, and then at, at, and at four o'clock, um, I kind of want to just like take a few minutes. I'm sure Joel may want to as well, and maybe just for five minutes, and maybe we'll just talk a little bit. Of college basketball, just a little bit, because this is my favorite time of the year. There are very few things I like more than the markets, and college basketball is one of them. Um, so maybe, maybe. If not, we'll wait till later in the week, but I have many opinions. Okay. American Airlines, wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look. Not with that. 
Um, nothing. N- nothing's happening now. It, it was all. It was all this morning. I don't see. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, this Jeez. is just the reopening and play. Then again, this is just the reopening play. I know. God. I, I mean, we talked oh about this. God. But I, I talked about this when I started seeing the cruise commercials. The cruise commercials started it all like two or three weeks ago, guys. When we saw that rotation, that first rotation to the reopening play. I mean, look at look at UAL. Look at look at all of them. I'm I'm sure you're not going to be able to find uh, a stock that at least is in the airlines and it's not starting to look good on the charts. Uh, well, that, that even American, Spirit Airlines. That, today. that American Airlines news though wasn't that out this morning? Um, Easy Mike, unless I'm mistaken, unless I'm confusing it I, with uh, I, with, with with all the other airlines uh, news news today. But it's just I, the market starting to look ahead, man. The market's six months ahead of God. us and seeing us getting all vaccine. Hey, hey I just and, spoke with Frank Holmes from the Jets ETF right on the ETF show, and he was all like, "Well, yeah, business travel won't come back, but you know what is come back? Tourism." And yeah, hard. I hard. I. I could go on either side of that debate because I, I understand I myself am wanting to want wanting to travel and uh, I, I get the tourism angle, but we all know that the majority of of airline traffic comes from business travel. So what happens in a couple of months? In six months, say, when everyone who wanted to travel did that, and now we're just stuck with you know lack of business travel than uh, or fewer business travelers than before that's kind of how i see it i don't know so let's take a little a little friendly bet here on carnival so the levels to get back to i would say let's say 50 50 dollars 50 dollars here um i I will say that it will get to that 50 dollars by the end of the year what do you think we're on ccl Mm -hmm. carnival baby the party boat. <laughs> yeah, the the cruise line not for families. <laughs> um, fifty dollars by the end of the year. That's a that's that's a it's a it's a big bet. Well, all right. Well, like what what are the stakes here? Like what are we talking about? All right. So I'll, I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you below. I, I I'll give you up to like let's say it's you got a range between twenty and thirty. Do you think it's going to be stuck somewhere in between this range or are we going to clear that gap from let's say February 24th around here, this 42, are we going to clear this gap? Cause that's really what it's all about. That's when we got that downturn in March. I'm feeling like a lunch bed here. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Car- Carnival to 50 by the end of the year. Yeah. I'll take that bet. All right. All right. Well, I'll take it too. Cause guess what? Wait, 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 wait. Which side are wait, wait, Which side are you taking? I, I'm taking the fifty. I'm taking the above fifty. It's oh, you, you're going. taking the over. Yeah, I'm I taking, was taking the, the over. over. I, I'm. T- that's how you know. That's how you know. We both want the over. That tells you enough. Then, then no I, I, I think I, I think I see someone in the back that would take the under on that. Then no bet. All right. <laughs> let, let, it's three thirty here. Let's do pre market prep at the close, shall we? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. It is time for pre market prep at the close. Three consecutive highs open, matched yesterday's low, and then once it took out there, that's all the breakout momentum traders needed. How are we doing, Joel? Oh, wait, Joel's not here. What the? There he is. How are we doing, Joel? I had him on. <laughs> I hey, how you doing? <laughs> how are we doing? Doing good. Doing good. So you and Mitch are on the same side of something? Yeah. Can that, you believe that's, it? That's a bearish indicator. Jesus, <laughs> man. <laughs> Oh no! And That's when talking- you know you gotta fade it, right? <laughs> I, I I I don't feel it's like I feel fifty dollars. I say fifty, man. By the end of the year on, on CCL, I don't feel the most like super super convicted. I, you know, see, I can't. You know what? It's hard to me to fade that bet because I I I wanted to be at fifty. Mm. I wanted to be because then that will mean that you know. We're completely out of the pandemic, and people are uh, are taking cruise lines. So, yeah, that's as, true. as much as I'd like to fade you, I can't do it. I can't do hey. it. I can't do it in my heart. 
I can't really, fade America, baby. Can't no, fade America. No, I can't. No, man. But <laughs> I tell you when, and I'll, I'll reiterate this again. When they come back online, they are going to be saving big dollars on that midnight buffet. They're not going to have to be <laughs> sure. Oh, I know you keep saying that. I don't think. Oh, so. come on! Have I'm you all about the late been... night pizza, though. Oh yeah. man, you've never seen that people start lining up at a lot. Joe, of Joe, clock. Joe, I, I, I've seen it. I've done it. You're, you're saying that no one, that people are going to take cruises and they're not going to do the midnight buffet. That's what you're saying. They're right? not. I, well, no, they're not. Well, I, I got some uh, information uh, here. Right. So oh, cr- cruises are actually given free open bar often. So I don't think they're going to make it to midnight, Joe. <laughs> You don't got to worry about the buffet anymore with the open bar. Oh, man. <laughs> They're trying to make up for it. All right. I uh, don't know. Uh, but uh, let's see. Dino. Dino yeah. in the 1815. I'm not sure that was. He says, great write-up on AMC last week on the site. Appreciate the research. All right, Dino. Let's uh, let's go to the S&Ps here. And yeah, show us those charts. Do you know what? Don't. I, and I, I almost tweeted this. I put the, this in a tweet. But I didn't want to put it in a full tweet. I'm going to it, Spencer. I'm getting it. I gotta gotta find it. <laughs> and uh, I want to say, do we have a triple top in the S and P 500 index futures? Uh oh, uh oh. We got three highs, close enough for me. But I didn't want to get the heat, uh, the hate tweets coming my way. But the numbers, the numbers speak for themselves, folks. Uh, we had a high February 16th, 49. 50. This is basis the June contract. You then had a high on Thursday at 49 even. Pre-market high 47.75. They matched it in the regular session. Three tops within two points. I'm calling the triple top. If you want to risk 11, 12 points, I haven't called the top in a while. Go ahead, baby. Go Ooh. right ahead. But you got an identifiable area. 39.50, nice round number, you know, like 3,900, 3,950. So that's just what the numbers are telling me, folks. Uh, potential. But the next time a, it goes through there, it's going to blow it away. All right, what I do you say? I have a question. I have a question on that because I was paying attention to the big boys. I've been really paying attention to what you've been noticing, Joel, is that the, uh, even when we're going up, I feel like the big boys are holding down. Like, you know, you look at Google, you can look at, you know, uh, oh. the, some some of the big fangs, you know, it's yeah. just not there. I don't see the run that I, I expected from the stimulus. That, you know, that was like the, the debate this morning, you know, whether or not we've been going, can we go without the big boys? And like Apple, you know, Apple's having a, now Apple's showing some life today, but Mr. Softy in the red, Amazon in the red, Google in the red, Facebook a di- different day, uh, Tesla doing the 700 tango. Uh, so, you know, it's maybe if those stocks are just flat, and not not rallying, then it's okay. But uh, it's a great debate. I mean, whether or not you know the uh, the small you know the value stocks can lead us to a new all time high. That's that's been the discussion. But right now, man, if these things just went up a little bit, we would blast through that thirty nine fifty. But they're holding us down. Uh, crude oil futures. Uh, last night we talked about the multiple highs at the sixty six thirty area. It snuck over there overnight. Uh, boy, I'm getting a lot of lot of triples in here. Uh, your last three highs uh, on the daily chart, 66.21, 66.24, 66.40 today. You sold off pretty hard to 64, but you're getting a bounce. We'll see if that bounce is any good or not. Uh, gold getting away from 1700 up 930 at 1729.10. That's a good sign. Uh, silver going the same way for a change. Silver up 41 cents at 26.33. And uh, another triple, another triple. Well, this is a triple bottom. Look at 55K in the Bitcoin futures. I mean, come on, 465. 5380, 4915. There you go. That is your line in the sand. If the bulls can hold 55,000, then boom, you got more upside. If you lose that 55K, uh, you might have some work. And plus, you got a lot of buyers. 
I mean, people are scratching their head to bought this over 60000 over the weekend. But a uh, little bit of a pullback. Yeah. I'm not going to stick a fork in it until it takes out 55000 scratching, scratching their head for a day or two. Though, the, the, well, that will be 70000 yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You know what's had a day, Joel, is uh, any mall-based retailer. We'll look at all of them. Start with Macy's. Macy's. Start, with, start, with, start with Macy's and then go to like... Um, to the monster stock. They Michael's. go to like they go to like the Gap or Kohl's. Right? All these mall based retailers are having great days. Oh today. my lord! Look at the <laughs> Gap. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Looks like it's got a path to thirty five. Not just today, but look at the run of those things. I know. Um, I guess everyone's just gonna take their stimulus check, put half in the market, and go to a mall based retailer. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna buy a share of GameStop and then go to. The, get oh, GameStop's not doing too good today, but no, that's not. good for the market. Uh, don't have a great feel for this one yet. I did kind of liked it on the run up. Now it's just kind of waffling here at the, what two sixty three area. I'd say you better giddy up over two sixty three, or you got a date with uh, two hundred, maybe even one fifty. Uh, what other mall based retailers are there? Uh, Nordstrom's. Yup, JWN is having Woo! itself a day. Look at that! Finally back. Oh, this is that's a nice looking chart on Nordstrom's. You get like hey, uh, like what Skech- else? Skechers, SKX. <laughs> having a day. Yeah, everyone needs a new mama needs a new pair of shoes, huh? Look at <laughs> Skechers. <laughs> <laughs> you got a triple top on the monthlies here in Skechers, but that's not to 44 and change. So, uh, yeah, three highs in the 44 area uh, back in uh, December, January, February. I do yeah. have a few pairs. Can't I did. Well, I'm an old man, but and so is Dennis. But I got a, I got a few pairs of Skechers. I, They're not bad shoes. I, they are I, not bad shoes. I'm just pulling up like the weekly charts and all. I get like I just put up like A and F, Abercrombie and Fitch, and I can't believe. I know we looked at this like two days ago, but I I'm just in shock at this stock, Abercrombie wow. and Fitch, which basically in, in the entire time I've been following markets has been a dog. This thing is that I don't understand what, it. I, uh, what is that? Don't like a, think. Like a, it's a seven-year high. <laughs> It's insane, dude. It's all about the crash. So the seven Look at year, Michael's the seven year. What high about? Right is now. it Michael's on the block? <laughs> Look yeah, at Michael. Yeah, yeah. Well, Michael is going off the board though. Michael is going off. The oh board. yeah, that's, yeah. Michael's. Yeah. yeah, that's. I don't know who, yeah. who's taking who's taking them over. Apollo. Really? I can't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I might want to short Apollo after all right, this. All right, but, all right, all uh, right. Blaze has been asking about SOS for like an hour. Joel, can you look at SOS? <laughs> SOS. I don't know if yeah. I want to own a stock that has SOS. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me neither. Right? What a ticker name. <laughs> you know, I've been, my phone, I'm, lately I've been messing with them trying to answer it, and it gives you like that emergency SOS signal or something. I guess I've got to quit just hitting the buttons on this. Uh, what is this thing? Is this a blockchain uh, yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a crypto play. Huh. Well, I'll give you a, I'll give you an optimistic view here. An optimistic view would be that uh, you got a little bit overdone here when you went to sixteen. Oh come on, why does it? And let me do it. You know what I'm going to do, folks? For you watching at home, you got that high, then you got that low. So optimistic, you get back up to ten. You fill that gap. You had a gap down day. Uh, between where's your gap? Your gap's between eight 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 sixty nine and nine seventy six. Let's just get this up to ten dollars. Hold ten dollars. Fill the gap and get a little more moment, momentum. Uh, as much as Bitcoin moved this time, the relative performance is kind of weak. So I'd say the longer that it takes to get back to ten, hold ten, a little more chance you might just kind of roll over this way. Uh, rock solid support at six, but I'm sure you don't want to hear that with it trading at eight twenty. No. So uh, that's what it's looking like. I mean, would have liked to see a little bit more bounce on it today, but not having a bad day. Let's get over ten, hold ten, and then uh, make a run right. at that all time high. Oh, no, we, it's not all time high because this is uh, this was a crazy stock back in uh, seventeen. Emily Davis says that Abercrombie and Fitch has a cult like following. Yeah, when's the last time you've been into one of those stores, Emily? Because I haven't been in one in like ten years, and I can still 
smell the the the, the cologne. It's the burned, cedar. The cedar. It burned cologne. my nostrils. <laughs> it burned into my nostrils, Emily. You can still smell oh. that crappy cologne. Is okay. anybody anybody in the chat old enough? I may, is Bill Big D's here? Maybe he'll remember. It used to be like a really cool store. They used oh, to sell like hunting yeah. gear. And um, like I remember getting a really nice globe there and uh, uh, some really cool nostalgia books. So this was probably, whew, I don't know how long ago. All right. Bill Big D has me looking at L brands, which I don't want to do. <laughs> I guess women are still wearing undergarments. Oh boy, sixty bucks, man! Oh man! Oh man! Jesus. All right, I'll have to talk to the investment committee here because <laughs> you're running into a, board, you need a, board a couple meeting. highs here. Unbelievable! Bucks. What a gift! What a gift! What a gift! What a gift! Yeah, for sure. I mean, Joel. women are still wearing underwear, right? I mean, what are you gonna do? Joel. I don't know. Oh my god! I can't. Uh, uh, are they ever gonna spin off Victoria's Secret? That's the question. No, they tried. I, they tried and they failed. They tried. Yeah, and they, failed. they didn't. Yeah, Dennis, this is the one he went. He was gonna go into my account and sell it at twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Insane. I do. I do. That's Insane. how it goes. Insane. How's right. Ride doing? Uh, oh. I'm looking a few hours. Rid after the short report. Ah, coming, coming back, coming back for Marcus. Earnings Another in two days. So. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, Daniel's being nice. He's asking about Stitch, Stitch Fix. Yeah, this one, this, one got, this one got punished on earnings, and it's coming back a little bit. Did it stop going down? It's going up. Yeah, it stopped going down. We looked at this, I think, last week, too. Yeah, it had, they had I earnings. Mean, I think it was last yep. Monday they reported. Yep, someone stepped in at 50 here. I mean, if you know, if you want to risk five bucks on a swing trade here, uh, you know, buying it, it ooh, it's more than that because it's up five bucks today. Uh, but that's nice. You got the two day move. You know, if you're not in, maybe it just takes a little breather and maybe comes back and had a little gap today. Uh, between man, maybe if this came back into fifty four fifty five, then you have a little bit lower risk of a trade, risking down to that low. Or what you could do is someone was trying to get a big piece here at 50, right? Who knows if they got done? Maybe some shorts are trying to bring it in. So it's hard to see where they're going to reestablish, right? You know, it, so maybe they reestablish it like 54, 55. Uh, but you got the gap to fill up from earnings. And uh, this was one, you know, sleeper on Friday. Uh, and then uh, caught a move. I think this is one, Rob. I don't know if we talked about this one on Friday with Rob or not, but uh, big move, nice volume, stitch fix, and then QS. That's a spec, right? Oh, uh, not anymore. Quantum's. Mitch, you got any? Uh, this. I'll let you go first on this one. Well, I've called out that fifty plenty of times, and then the forty-five holds. So. You know, anybody that's stepping up above that 50, I think, is, is starting to be a bull. Chase it. So, yeah, yeah. It, 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 this one's interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, the, there's definitely potential on that chart. I mean, with that massive move. But the problem with QS is that you do have competitors stepping in the in kind of the same yeah. industry. And when competitors come, what ends up happening is maybe the pie just isn't as big anymore. And maybe the view that used to be in, in December isn't the same view that you're seeing now. Or, or also margins get squeezed. So, yep. Um, I'll tell you, it, it's an inter very interesting chart because mm -hmm. you know you came back kind of you know to the, it had the big decline, tried to rally, came back, undercut this low, tried to rally again, and then you undercut the low again, and now you got a decent rally going. I think first things first, uh, if this could clear 72, 71, 97, that's your February eighteenth high. Had a high right here at set. Ooh, that's a little bit seventy one forty four. So seventy two. That's a big bogey. And then what do you need to get half back? Halfway back. Halfway back of this move is eighty six. You always see counter trend moves. So uh, it's off the mat. And also, I don't want to get all patterny trading on you, but is that a little head and shoulders bottom there, Mitch? Uh, you got the right shoulder kind of leaving up. The left shoulder is a little bit gimpy, but. 
you haven't you have not seen that kind of pattern a head and shoulders pattern here in uh this battery play so keep an eye on it chart doesn't look bad s and p's did a little dip under 3940 and then they saw my tweet about the triple top and they are gunning for that high right now so that's uh that's qs what else you want to cover Joy, you want to see an interesting chart look at sjr from this morning shaw right the the acquisition from from rogers in in, in us dollars it comes out to 3246 is the price that they're paying so we are yeah. fi- we are $5 below that price right now sgr sjr you know why because you know why? because i thought they didn't have antitrust concerns in canada yeah i didn't think they had a government in canada i mean it, come it on five dollars it's five dollars off of the offering price yeah so i said price. that this morning i said that this morning i mean going from three to two k i don't know I don't. I mean, it sure doesn't look like someone's coming. Are you sure there's not a dollar? Is it really thirty-two U.S. dollars? I'm telling you, it, the 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 takeout price in Canadian dollars is forty fifty, forty dollars fifty cents, and you that comes out to thirty-two dollars and forty-six cents U.S. Wow. What's uh? Who's the guy? Who's um? Rogers, right? That's RCI. Yeah, RCI. What are they doing to that? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought of, and uh, and Triple D poo pooed it. So, uh, Rogers, poof, they gave everything back on that. I don't know. It certainly doesn't look like someone's going to outbid them. And it's certain. I don't know. There's uh, there's a little bit of worry here that uh, whatever regulators they have in Canada uh, may not approve this deal. That's what it's looking like to me. That's what I I mentioned on this morning's show. This uh, this Baba chart is very interesting here. I know we talked, we've talked about this a couple times in the last week, but uh, Ooh, the, the regulators this. the regulators are forcing a sale of some media assets. This, okay. this thing is interesting. Came down. I mean, it filled the gap here. It matched this low, uh, twenty six fifty three, twenty six and a quarter. I mean, I I talked about this one with Triple D about the two thirty area. He was thinking of uh, reengaging. So you got a nice level of lead on there called two twenty six. You're three bucks away. Of course, you don't know what kind of news is going to come out. I mean, oh, is it is the bad news already out on it? I mean, we don't. That's the thing. We don't really know. We don't know. You don't know the old Chinese curveball. Overnight. Easy Mike. Easy Mike's going against me. He sold K Web, which I'm long. Uh, he sold K Web, huh? The Chinese Internet ETF. That's okay. Let's make some uh, market. Let's see here. K K W E B. You've been in this one for a long time, Spencer. I've been in it for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh phew, looks like the Baba chart. Yeah, uh, I mean I uh, it, it, it trades the same. It trades the same. It's Baba, it's 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 JD, it's Baidu, it's all those guys. Ten cent it trades just they all trade the same. So yeah. Um Okay, right, back up near the highs of the session to point off the high. So, boom, boom. See if we can take it out. No such thing as a triple top. Except when there is. Uh, on the earnings front this week, guys, not much, especially the, the front half of the week. We do have Lennar reporting tomorrow afternoon, which is interesting. Uh, home builder. Uh-huh. But outside of that, only reports I'm seeing of note uh, are Thursday. We, we, we got FedEx and Nike after the close, and that's pretty much the only reports that interest me. Yeah, I was looking through the earnings reports, and there wasn't much there. Nope. Uh, FedEx, hard bottom. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lordstown Motors ride is supposed to report Wednesday. All right. That, that is of note. Uh, let's see. I mean, this FedEx, I mean, put in that hard bottom at 240. Uh, maybe we'll talk with Mark <laughs> this week. Uh, wait, you had a 70 yeah. point move, 35. So you get back up to 270 here, not too far away. You're taking back half of that move before the report. Uh, we'll see how, how everything turns out with, uh, with that. But if, you know, if we're full born, you know, reopen, then you would think it would be negative for this stock, right? Less people open it on Amazon. Oh. I mean, that's what Amazon's thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at I least the Amazon investors, people are going to be going to the stores instead of, uh, look at Amazon, just clinging, clinging to that 3,000. Well, we're above it, so 
Uh, not a bad looking pattern. Here, there. Here's, the, here's the other way to look at that, though. Like, like Mitch was saying, oh, these fangs, they're going nowhere. There's that. Well, but if you're long, if you're long term bullish, this is a great opportunity, right? Start, start accumulating some, some fangs, some, yeah. some Amazons, some Netflixes, Facebook. They've done Apple's they, having a good day. They, they've done did, diddly squat for six months. Yeah. I agree. More, more than that, more than that now. Nine months. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. SFPs just made a new high, 48 and a quarter. I know there was a little bit to sell there, but uh, that little fake out uh, going into like the last 15, 20 minutes, uh, right back up there, uh, really poises uh, to make a new all time closing high as well. The only thing we have to do on that is be above Friday's close at 32.75. All right. They keep talking about GameStop. As if that thing trades with any rhyme or reason. I I really, really just want somebody from the SEC to come out and help us explain or help help explain to us what like why is this happening? Like what what is it? Who is making GameStop go from you know uh two ninety to three fifty in twenty minutes and then back down, give it give it, give it all Give it all back or give half of it back in, in an it's hour. A, and then... it, it's the big boys, man. I know. I know. I know. This thing trades yeah. with no rhyme or reason. It's down 20% today because the wind is blowing. Like, makes no sense. It's the... good, though, for the market, though. I mean, going back to your old, you know, a G, you know, GME going down, good for the market. Remember that correlation? I, that, not, uh... But this, it doesn't even. It... <sighs> Yeah, I know what you're saying, but it th this doesn't make like this is just trading off of nothing. It's just trading off of whales pushing it around, which I guess is makes it the same as every other stock. But this is just it, it, there was no there was zero logic to this thing, mm -hmm. and that's why I mean I'm staying away. Uh, you know, I, you I, bought I, it down there, man. You had you I, had uh... that was different. That was different. I was buying it as first as a joke, second because I thought and. It turns out I was I was right, or Luke was right that it, it did get it did pop during the hearing. Not that I sold it then; I didn't. I sold it the following morning at a loss. But it it, it trades off of nothing right now. It doesn't trade off technicals of fundamentals aren't aren't even a thing. Why, why anybody would trade this thing is beyond me. Um, I I understand buying and holding if you're bullish and diamond hands, whatever, great. But why anybody would trade this thing for a short term or for a swing trade is beyond me because. How do you control your risk? In it makes no sense. It makes no sense. You gotta you gotta sell it when it's going up, and it looks like <laughs> it's never coming down. And you gotta buy it when it's going down, and never looks like it's coming up. But yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, Spencer, I've seen the spreads when this one trades, and you're immediately down like 40, 50 cents, almost a point. Well, the spread Two now, points. the spread now is what almost is a dollar. Yeah, it's two. It's a dollar. It's the massive. Dollar. It's massive. I, I I wouldn't take that spread. I just can't do it. It's just, yeah. I don't Gotta get the edge. It's hard to get the edge in something like that. And when you don't have the edge, you're better off. S and P's. So much for my triple top. We just <laughs> busted into the thirty nine fifty handle. Made a high of fifty one to quarter. Those uh four hundred million in selling balances. They blew that off. Uh, so new all-time high here. Uh, Spoo's in, in uh, unknown territory here. Had into the final six, mix, six minutes. Did, I, did Mitch take off there? No, he's still around. You still, Mitch, you still there? I look frozen. Does I, does okay. it, did I not move I, I want to bolt at like 358, so I'll let you take everyone the last two minutes of the day, okay? Hey, not a worry. Not a worry. You're allowed to get on out of here. You do yeah. enough for us, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Yep, yep. Got so, the, so uh, on go other ahead. words, before we get you out of here, what's up with March Madness? What's the pick? Come on, I'm putting you on. I, I, on I, I, I almost wonder. I almost right wonder here. if we should wait, wait till like Thursday to get Joel's like fleshed out thoughts. But I'm no, sure no. I'm putting him on the pressure. I, I like <laughs> to put him on the pressure. Let's see yeah. what he got. What do you got for us, <laughs> my man? Do you want to hear my heart? No, you no. Want... Your brain. Your brain. Your brain. Your the brain. heart. My well, you know where my heart's at. Screw the heart. The, the heart has me picking Maryland, which is stupid. <laughs> Forget the heart. I mean, obviously, I will do the sacrificial lamb and take Michigan. 
in a couple for, brackets, just right? Yeah. Just because that's what I do every right. year, no matter what. Even when they're not in a tournament, I take uh, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> uh I haven't seen Gonzaga play that much, so they got three All Americans, they're, right? They're very they're, good. They're, they're loaded. No one has gone undefeated and won the tournament since 1976, and that's when Indiana beat Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I actually went to the Michigan Indiana game in Chrysler Arena when they had uh, Ked Benson, Scott May, Bobby Wilk- Wilkerson, Tom wow. Abernathy. I remember that, and then Michigan lost in the final. So that's that's hard to do, but I got it, and I and I'm going against you know uh, myself here a little bit. But man, Illinois, I tell you, they got that. If that big guy can stay out of trouble, they are lightning quick. I think they have one of the best players in the country. So I had my sacrificial lamb. I'll take Michigan in one bracket. I'll take Ellen, uh, Illinois in another, and then uh, I'll see how I'll I'll spray the other ones out. But it's hard to win. It's hard to win, you know, with picking Gonzaga. And then another sleeper too is is Bama, who is a who is a two seed. They won the regular season title. They won the um, the conference title. Mm-hmm. And do you know their coach? Uh, Spencer, Nate Nate Oates. Oates. yeah, he, he he was in Michigan, right? He was a high school, so I got a little sentimental, uh, you know, uh, feel for him because he coached at Romulus High School. That's nearby uh, for several years, which is just uh, that's where our airports uh, located. And um, what should I call it? You remember Dylan uh, Wittenberg? Yeah. Family, they're they're intern, family friends with him. Intern Dylan, really? Into, yeah, family intern friends. Dylan. Dylan yeah, wow. so wow. that's it, man. I just said that 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 guy from Illinois is tough, and uh, boy, oh boy. But man, hopes Michigan can get hot. I won't be going to the Final Four, though, but uh, that's right. that's my look. All right, well, all right we'll, I'm going to we'll give see. my final thoughts. S&P's yeah. new all-time high. Uh, we took out no such thing as a triple top. New all-time closing high. Uh Bitch, you take it away. Give them uh, some good buys and sells. Uh, I'm out of here a little bit early, guys, today. Right. Don't knock my pay. Okay? See you, Joel. All right. We are green uh, across the board in the major indexes. S&P is up about a half a percent. Uh, NASDAQ up 1%. Russell up, what is that, a third of a percent. Uh, most of the sectors are green today. We are down in energy, down in financials, down in the materials. So you're seeing that rotation come off, you know, financials, energy is super correlated right now. Tech going the other way. That, that relationship is in play for the day. Um, Mitch and I are just going to hang out for a while now because we've got a new show we're debuting at 4.30 today, Cannabis Insider. Uh, this is different from our weekly cannabis show. Uh, that that show on Thursdays at 4 is, is more of a show – um, about the entire cannabis industry uh, and it and people who uh, work in it and the different parts of the business. This show is really going to be more focused on the markets, cannabis stocks. They're going to talk about uh, a bunch of stocks that, that that I own and some that I don't. They're going to talk about Cure Relief. They're going to talk about um, the Tilray of Free Emerger. They're going to talk about where where's my list here? I had the list. They're going to talk about uh, is I don't know if it's Air or uh, I think it's Air Wellness. Uh, they're going to talk about Planet Thirteen. They're going to talk cannabis stocks. So that's at four thirty Eastern time today. Patrick Lane and Javier Haas, who is our uh, uh, reporter extraordinaire. Um, and then until then, um, we, what we want to start doing, I think, is using this four o'clock to four thirty window. Um, I don't know how it'll work now because we're, we're coming out of earnings season. But typically these next few minutes is when is the heaviest news flow of the day. And we, we want to kind of stay on and be there for the news flow. So there is the closing bell. I don't know if you heard that, but we just closed at a new all time high. Ladies and gentlemen, what a day. S and P 500 just hit 39, 68, 77. That is a new Closing high, yep. Int- intraday high was hit today as well, 390.708. So whatever your concerns are about 
the economy, about inflation, uh, unemployment, the pandemic, whatever your concerns may be, yield curve, I don't know. We're at all time freaking highs right now. Yeah, did I, I can say I didn't expect it today. You know, I actually have been talking about a, a rip coming for that 400 for a while now, but it's it's funny how even when you think it's going to go bullish, then when it starts going bullish, you think a bear. <laughs> Isn't that the name name of the game? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's just how it goes. You know, I actually uh, closed up some of my SPAC uh, positions today because I was just a little concerned. Didn't really seem like we were getting the reactions that I wanted to see in the SPAC industry. So I did close up some of them. Doesn't mean that I won't get back in, but it, it was a matter of to get to cash. Because to me, I felt like, you know, in times of, of down, you need cash. And it looks like we're ripping up. But for, for right now, I, I at least going to have probably about 50% cash in my SPAC portfolio. Wow. And your SPAC, that's not your whole portfolio. That's just your SPAC. No, just my SPAC. I have, I, I, I try to separate the accounts because if not, you know, the strategies start mixing together. And when you mix the strategies, that's when you start. This like, is just, a, just this is a one the minute chart on the SPY. Look at that rip. What's moving that fast and as, as as part of these big boys to make it move up that much? Great, see, great question. Oh, we no. start with the fangs. Yep. Let's see what's what's ripping. Yeah, up a there. little bit. Yep. In the last few minutes or so, last few minutes. You I, I talked about them sleepy, and this is what happens. <laughs> you see Amazon. Last few minutes, you see Tesla. No, not really. What about Goog? Yep. Netflix. Yep. You know, JP Morgan. Yep. There's a lot of rotation, I think, still going on underneath everything. Because like you mentioned, all all the retail, everything today, I, I think there's still a rotation going on. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether we see it or not, it's something's going on there. Because if you see the retailers, you see almost everything. I mean, you, you, you can think about like, let's say, cruise lines, airlines, um, anything that has to do with the reopening, anything that you you can think of, you're seeing a lot. Another thing that I'm noticing a lot is a lot of biotechs moving lately. Uh, have you seen? Have you noticed that, Spencer? The healthcare moving, biotechs moving. That I'm definitely um, seeing. I mostly just watch the IBB. Uh, what names in in particular were you watching? Um, when I just look at the gappers and and I look at the best percentage gainers of the day, majority oh, of them like, are, like, are, like are VIR, on biotechs. VIR right now. last week, I feel like we saw. Yeah, this is this bulb. VIR was big last week. Um, oh, we'll give it all back. Ouch. Um, you know, we got Ruby today. That went up just like a freaking monster. Yeah, every day, there's always another one. Of these. Uh, what, what what does Ruby do? I, I don't I don't even know. Do we yeah, know? well, it looks like there was at least a trial that was with this one, but let's see. But there's uh, BioX. There's phase uh, one and two trial of patients with advanced solid tumors. Okay, some sort of skin cancer, or maybe not skin cancer, but uh, definitely definitely a, not skin cancer. I take that back. Here's a smaller play that's been moving. I know a lot of people have been watching it. Uh, Mogo, Mogo is in the e-commerce. Mogo, I don't, I've never heard of this. The Mogo, one. bro. What the hell is Mogo? To Mogo. I've heard of Gogo. Gogo, but Mogo. I don't know. I don't know what, what Mogo is. What is Mogo? Consumer finance. What is this? Canadian-based fintech company. Heyo! I bet you Kathy owns it. <laughs> we should look it up on the arc. See, see, see if it's a part. But it, this chart definitely is ripping back up. Uh, I'd keep an eye on it for for you day traders out there. I, I don't know too much about the company, but definitely. Um, and then healthcare, I see C Y H community mm. health systems. Yeah. Damn. And then just as somebody in the chat pointed out, we, we just Damn. looked at what ripped at the open, uh, what did not rip at the open or what went down at the open. Right. Yeah. Um, well, this is a, let's go back to my one minute chart here. Mm, AMC held up. Interesting. GameStop did not. I mean, they had that actually, that's, yeah. Here, look at that into the into the close right there into the close, right there. Man, I don't know, guys. It's a weird market. We are at all yeah, time highs. That's that's market. the bottom line. Weird bottom market. line. We are at all time highs. That's all you need to know, right, dude? Let's uh, just 
Let's I'm just gonna... go to Red Robins. Did you see Red Robins today? Let's go get a burger, bro. What is? Uh, let's take around that again. It's, uh... Red Robins just ripping. R R R G B, right? Just, just n- now, it's just worth the same, you know. As as God, pre- why even the pandemic? Why you know? even sell a stock? Selling stocks is stupid. Why? <laughs> why not just buy every stock ever, and just not look at your portfolio ever again? Because stocks only go up. This is ridiculous. I mean, this is a stock that went sideways for two years, and now that it's been through a pandemic, has gone from about like five dollars to forty. Let's go to a monthly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you see from 2018 right there to about 2020 until the pandemic it just went sideways completely sideways guys i i don't know if this is i a, don't know i don't know is, if it's it, a, it, a bull is, is a stimulus is this the stimmy thing is it is it a reopening is it a combo of both right. um, one that's been on my radar kroger kroger's been having a good looking chart groceries been looking good I don't I don't ever even look at these, but I mean in this environment where you're seeing stocks like all the reopening plays making moves up, maybe maybe they're seeing something in Kroger, you know. Um there's there's a bunch. I saw uh sports, sporting goods. Um the one yeah. that the one that Jason mentioned uh, a couple times, uh what was it? Uh five sporting good or something like that. Uh it's Five, five below. What? No, no, no. no. There's, there's another one. There's another sporting good. Oh one. yeah. But What's the one that Jason's been playing? Five. Um. Uh. I know one that's similar. H I B B. But. Um. What's it? It's like. God damn, Chad, help us out. It's like uh, it's like is it like Ace something? I don't even remember it. Big Big Five. Is that it? BG. Is that is that what he's been playing? I think big, it is Big Five Sports or something like that. Big Five. BG BGFV, right? Yeah, BG. BGFG. FV. There it is. That chart. Look, I mean, it's looking good. It's pushing up there to the highs. Has multiple resistance touch. Getting some volume on this last push from that fifteen. <sighs> it looked like it wants to rip through that that 16 and keep going through that 20. I mean, like I've always do your own risk analysis, but that's what the technicals are pointing at least. Absolute. And, I, and I, I just you can like, look at HIBB. Look at, look at that. Look at that move today. My, my, my brain is, is so broken with, with like all these stocks because I, I remember last, like a year ago, went crazy. I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember I remember the crash like it was yesterday and it literally looked like like all these businesses were going to go under and cheesecake couldn't like service its debt right <laughs> How's cake doing? <laughs> Excellent. Con- <laughs> it's, it's, oh my god. Is it an all-time high now? It almost is though. You they don't like, want your they, cake and icing, bro? It's right there. They, they couldn't service their damn debt and now they're back almost at all time highs. To to me, it's almost like how much did we really save the market? Because God, there was a point there, none of these companies made sense because the amount of debt that they were in and the price that they were at, it just didn't make sense. But I mean, hey, fundamentals, I don't know what they are it. anymore. I don't I don't get it, guys. I, I went to school I, for this stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, well, what happened to the cupcake on the board? I just turned it around. It's on the it's on the other side. Um, stocks only go up. Why is DKNG down today? There is a stock that's down. Let's talk about DraftKings. Draft there is a stock that's down. Let's zoom way the hell in not on the monthly. Um, why is it down today? Because DraftKings. Here's one possible reason. No one can say for sure, but one reason is that DraftKings. What what kind of stock is it? Right. It is a. Um, high growth stock and a lot of those not all of them but not all of them were up today i mean here paypal was kind of flat what about square uh what about penn national that was up today no it wasn't it was down today okay so the pen and DraftKings trade together what about czr that's interesting right because they're both being added to the s&p 500 this coming friday and you can see if i go to a one, a one minute chart let's go to uh no Let's go to the 15-minute chart. Let's zoom in on just today. So you can see that was the the open right there. This is this is Friday night, that green candle. 
Let's go back to DKNG though for a second. So you can see DKNG, hop at the open, give it all back. Very similar to pen, right? And with pop Friday night, be back at the open. So I, I don't I don't really know why. To answer your question, DraftKings. Um whoever asked that. Oh, they said they, they did an offering? Is that true? I don't see anything right yeah, now. Yeah, let me take a look. See, here. there you go. You guys are quick. Hop into the news feed. Boom. Proposed offering of one billion dollars in convertible senior notes. But that's that that's not that's not bad though, because uh that's not necessarily dilutive convertible notes just means it's debt that could become stock later on uh stock offerings are dilutive which is why they tend to stocks tend to go down when offerings are announced because it means you own less of the company a convertible offering isn't necessarily dilutive um it could be it could be to to me you you, you look at these and they just do moves on the on the daily chart so I wouldn't necessarily stress about DraftKings because if you look at the weekly, man, this thing's just straight trending upwards. Look at the weekly. God, yeah, the I, trend, I, I the had trend a friend until it breaks my, that trend. My friend asked me if if, uh, if he used to buy DraftKings like when when that when the merger went through, and I don't know I don't know why he asked my opinion. I when I told him, I basically told him I wasn't going to buy it is what I said, and I didn't, and I am a fool. So. It, it just goes to show you, you got to always ask yourself, is it going to get better or worse? Is the environment going to get better or worse? If you would have asked yourself for DKNG at that moment, I would have said long term better, but it, the short term wasn't looking was, wasn't looking good. So it, it just something that you got to ask yourself sometimes, especially investing. You know, investing is way different than trading, guys. You got to think like, two, three months, six months, a year out, where is this company going to be? What opportunities do they have in the market share? And if you would have thought of that, maybe, and only thought of that, you would have known DraftKings definitely had the potential to grab that market share. And with that market share, there's that revenue to get it up there. So, Yeah. Uh, I spend too much time thinking about valuation when I clearly should not be doing that. That's stupid. Valuation is dumb. Valuation doesn't matter. Can we uh, comment? Yeah. Okay, here. Yeah. Let, 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 let's go back to here. So we're on, it's 4.13. This is like the critical part of the day. There's news coming in like out every direction. Let's yeah. just go into the Benzinger Pro and let's scroll down to 4 o'clock and see what we see as far as notable headlines in the last few minutes. Um, Max R. Yeah, I'll get there. I just saw that one in a second. So I'm seeing a couple of smaller mm. earnings reports. Nothing too crazy. Max R mixed shelf offering. Let's go to MAXR. That's that, an important one right there. Space play, satellite play. Let's go to a 15 minute chart. My favorite's space play. No, let's go to a one minute chart. Even better. There you go. See, th that is dilutive, right? Mm -hmm. Mixed shelf offering is dilutive. So that's notable. I think this is a good timing because uh, one of the things to mention, guys, is that Kathy's space ETF, right? Um, a lot of people are expecting it to come out yeah, at the when, end of the month. When's that coming out? The, All right. the earliest it could come out, Spencer, just to give you, just to give our viewers insight, is the twenty yeah. third, at least technically wise. Um, but I, I think okay. you know you're probably looking at, I would say near the end of that week, the twenty sixth, the 29th. If this one's trying to do this at uh, right now, it could be. You know, like, hey, boom, they they knock it down towards a level, mm. and then Kathy sees it at a nice discounted level, a nice diluted level, and then. All right, so so the offering is is four hundred million dollars, and it is common stock. So, MAXR will trade; it is trading down on that. Um, what else do we see? Uh, okay, L O T Z, L O T Z. I hope they have lots of earnings. Uh, let's look at that report here. So I'll read the numbers. Mitch can pull up the chart. L O T Z. Uh, their Q4 earnings per share. They lost a dollar and thirty cents per share last quarter versus an estimate of a dollar twenty-three cent loss. So they came in below the EPS estimate. I'm sorry, that was a year ago, year over year. So uh, losses widening on a year over year basis. Sales uh, increasing, not not much. Thirty-seven million dollars is what they made last year, last quarter, versus twenty-six million dollars in the same quarter a year ago. They gave some guidance both for the quarter and for the year. Their Q1 sales guidance in the mid to low forty million dollar range. Sales guidance for the entire year 
in like the mid three hundred million dollar range. And just to see how that compares, uh, I'll I'll bring the chart back up in a second. Um, and just to see how that compares to oh, we don't have they're a recent IPO, aren't they? So I yeah, have no have too much. no earnings uh no earnings history to go off of there. Yeah, this one's playing in the Carvana uh, room. Maybe look at those stocks to oh, see how the fantastic. sympathies reaction. More of those, just what we need. Yeah, you know, internet internet plays, man. It's the internet of things, bro. IoT getting to a, a crazy market cap in the next couple of years. Um, that this this is this is the the new dot com era. Uh, what, all right, <laughs> what am I seeing here? I'm seeing. Trying to go through the news feed, trying to find, uh, trying to find some headlines that are that are of note. While you look for some headlines, guys, uh, I've been looking at some of the like Another the one. hotels, Another like offering. Hilton, and I thought that that I could get a possibly a, a potential nice buy in these. But then I look at the chart and I'm like, oh, oh man, we're already back. We're already back to to golden times here, you know, on on, on Hilton. I mean, if you look at the yearly chart. Look where you dropped. Look where we're at now. We're at higher than before the pandemic. I don't understand that, but hey, maybe you guys do. Hey, speaking of uh, restaurants and all-time highs and news, Potbelly, which I, I always forget they're public, PBPB. <laughs> I did not know that. They announced an offering, four and a half million share offering via selling shareholders. So again, not dilutive. Somebody wants out. They're getting out. And why wouldn't they want out? If you pull PBPB, oof, go to a daily. What a gift! If you own this thing a year ago <laughs> at a dollar, you're at almost seven dollars now. It's a gift and a half, man. Anyway, I, I, I'm surprised. You know how many companies didn't go under in that March time? I know we were there for very little time. But I mean, you can look back on the chart. There's major. I th- I would say about ninety percent of the charts. If you took a shot, you probably made bang. Yep, yep, for sure. <laughs> That's for the sure. truth. Didn't matter what you chose, just that you took a little a little skin in the game. And so lessons on lessons. You know what I mean. Next time I see that big old downturn, I'm either gonna probably tell myself, hey, it's either the end of the world, or I get a good dip buy. Not really, not much in newsland, everyone. It is a quiet after hour session. This is how it's going to be for the next uh, few weeks, hopefully, right? As we come out of earnings season, and there really is not much on the earnings front until the banks start reporting in like a month. I think JP Morgan is in like, um, see if they have it, they have it in pro yet. Yeah, JP Morgan reports on the 14th, a month from yesterday. So, uh, We've got about four weeks of of relative quietness at the uh, after the close in terms I, of news flow. I see something taking a hard hit off of news. C L S K. Yeah, uh, we Clean do. Spark. Another an, again with these offerings. Another offer? offering of They're big one. money. This one, this one taking a hard hit down. They're raising Holy money. Moly. Why wouldn't they want to raise money at these it, higher valuations? This is this is a scary looking chart on a one minute. Oh, this is the one goodness. where your stop doesn't even work. You wish you had a, well, you, a well, stop that filled you, here. You can't have stops after yeah, hours. Yeah, so. you are. Oh, these these are the ones that I get a little bit of worried about being in because man, the turnaround is just it's just tough, man. Seeing a stock go from twenty nine forty to twenty six eighty. Yeah. You know, you have a thousand shares there. Um, let, let's just say it turns really quickly. Um, so yeah, definitely a hard turnaround there with a stock that was looking like it was starting to bounce back. This uh, is looking a, this good. Is interesting. Yeah. And the weekly look good. So this is how yeah. you can get caught. So you got to always got to be careful. Like I always say, not all the eggs in one basket because that, right. that, that can happen. Big, big insider buy in Fox. Rupert Murdoch uh, went uh, made an open market purchase. He went into the market and he bought a hundred and just under one hundred sixteen thousand shares of Fox at an average price of twenty five seventy five on March. 11. Actually, no, he bought way more than that. He bought like half a million shares uh, at at somewhere basically in the twenty five and twenty six dollar um, handles last week. So he was doing some buying last week. 
How's Fox doing? Fox is part of that 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 uh you know telecom not telecom the uh tr- the broadcast group like that Viacom that was running yep. Discovery was running Fox they, they all trade together and they're all running last week and he was buying into it. I'm wondering if if Netflix and Roku are on the delay for those moves and we we start seeing some a little bit of that move now. Um, you know. Netflix off to support there off 500 uh, Roku. You know, you, you could look at also. I haven't, I haven't talked about Roku much the past month. It's not, I, it hasn't been, I like it. It hasn't man. been much to say, but. To tell you the truth, that oh, pullback man. looks interesting to me because it, it bounced right off that 320. And I mean, uh, to me, this one looked like it was a magnet for 500 and just turned around. And, and it could have been literally just the market turning around right there. Uh, the sentiment changing, but to me, Roku in the long term, you heard the way Kathy Woods talked about it. She she went on her webinar and she had an analyst bring up about how Roku uh, is just is just winning because they're the number one TV sold, and and, and yeah. if you get that TV sold with that app already included, it's definitely a, a kind of a competitive advantage. Um, the only other one is Amazon. Donkey yeah. Dave didn't Disney buy Fox. They bought everything that Fox owned except for Fox's live sports and live news assets. So basically Fox News and Fox Sports um, and the Fox Network. Everything else that everything everything else from Fox was sold to Disney, uh, but not the live TV businesses. So there was still like basically Fox can just consist of Fox Sports and Fox News is, is what it consists of right now. Um Okay, I, I hear your point about that, Mitch Roku. I wanted to buy this and was afraid. I almost pulled the trigger like three times and didn't. I should have. Um, that being said, this is a nice pullback. So, yeah. The question is, will it get to that five hundred? I guess uh, it can. Can it get what, back what, up to what, that What's level? the all-time high? Four seventy-four, somewhere in that window. Four seventy-four. Yeah, like right up there to four eighty, somewhere in there. All right. I, All right, I'm, it, I got a high of 486.72. Okay. All right. Let's go check out their news for you guys. Again, this is the this is a quiet day right now, but this is the typically the busiest time of the day for news. This and like the the six to seven a.m. Eastern hour are, are are your busiest times of the day, just in terms of sheer news flow. Uh, but it is really quiet today. You can see just in terms of the number of headlines. We we've only posted what is that? Like 50 headlines in the last one. That's not a lot in the last 20 minutes. That's almost nothing. Um, so quiet, quiet day. Uh, Isaac wants to know if it's dumb to get into Ford. Now it's never dumb to buy stock. As long as you have your out, right? As long as you know where your uncle point is, uh, you know, as long as you know where you're going to sell, if, if it goes against you, then it's never a dumb thing to buy. That being said, if you're buying it now, you are chasing people like me, right? Mm-hmm. People like Luke, Jacoby, people like Dennis. Um, uh, you know, I bought this stock. I don't even remember when. I think it was back in like December. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Um, I bought it around $8. Um, that's not to say, right, look, the trend is your friend. That's, 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 that's the... Simplest way to put it, I don't have any indicators up on this chart. I, I don't have any RSI. I have no idea what all that says. All I know is that the stock has gone uh, in the last few months from 750 to 13, and you're paying it up. Doesn't mean it can't keep going up, but I would say no. Is it the answer? Is it dumb? No, it is not dumb as long as you have your out and as long as you know why you're buying it. If you're buying it just to chase, that that could be okay. Uh, but fair Ford has its share of down days. Don't think it's been straight up since then. It's, it's not. Look, it's got. There was that one period where it had like five down, five down days in a row in January. So, no, I wouldn't say it's dumb. I I only own this thing for one reason, and that was because I'm buying it for when they when they release the uh, the electric F150, which is the top selling truck in in the world. But um, hey, you know it, my friend. At the end yeah. of the day, it's a long term with Ford. So if it's a long term play. One thing that I would tell you to do is use a long-term chart. Yeah, zoom out on Ford. Yeah, you can't be... Go to a monthly on Ford. Yeah, exactly. Dear Lord, this thing. 
Hey, and, you, and that you, that tells you something. You you also get a dividend. Let's not forget that you you get a dividend. Mm -hmm. I I don't think they cut their dividend. And if they did, they didn't, I think they reinstated it. But if they uh if if they did cut the dividend, and I don't remember, if someone correct me. But you, you get the divvy, and that's pretty much all you all you've gotten <laughs> for the past twenty years. Um, but hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yep, uh, I think you you just kind of see how it approaches. I think it's rushing towards that 16 resistance, but then the 16 resistance is pretty tough there. At least it has on the chart one, two, three, four different times on the yearly that you, you can see that resistance in that 16. So you might get some selling up there because there's some old volume up there, maybe some overhead supply. I would look for some pullbacks closer towards 10 or 11, but that's just because I always try to buy off support. And I never buy off resistance just because I tell myself that I can wait to get another opportunity. If I don't, then so be it. I don't actually know about Ford Dividend. So let me uh, find it in Benzinga Pro. I'll just go to the news feed and go to dividends, go to Ford. And uh, let's see. Yeah. So they suspended it in March. Damn. Dun, dun, dun. Did they ever reinstate that? Oh well. That if is they, a question. If, I feel like I should know if I if I like should check my uh, state my statement. I should know if I got the dividend or not. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'll tell you so, what's an, an interesting play here is yeah. going to be how solar reacts in the next. Oh couple man, months. wait. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. The theme of the day is stock offerings. Nicola. Stock Nicola. offering. Stock offering. Stock offering. Pull up the chart. <laughs> Damn it. Where's my chart? Hold on. Nicola. Here's my chart. Here's my chart. Nicola stock offering. Where's my soundboard? Come on, soundboard. Turn on for me. And here we go. And Nicola down to 16. Interesting. That's the theme of the day. His, his offerings. That's like the sixth offering we've seen in the last half hour. Hey, uh, Nicola. Hey, you know how that hurts. I mean, gosh, talk about it. Talk about a dog. Talk oh, about, talk, talk, talk about talking a dog. Been a total dog. Joel said it. You heard it. We're talking dogs. Yeah. Hey man, well, one thing I can say about Nicola yeah. is that just why, give, Jim? Because they need to raise money. That's why they, they give need it time, to man. Raise they need money. They need products. They need products. Does GM still got this thing? No, no, no. they got that, rid of it. That that, that, that fell apart. That fell, oh fell apart. man, oh gosh, <laughs> good. You, Lord. You, you can see exactly if you want to know. Oh, when did GM uh, announce a deal with Nicola? Right there, right, right. That, that 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 green candle. The green candle and otherwise sea of red. That's it. That was hey, the GM deal. Tough chart. Tough chart. You know, these are these are like the ones that we've seen on 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 oh, like when we've man. seen uh, any parabolic one. And yeah. and so one of the things that happens, it takes so long for the price discovery <sighs> to be down here where they think that the valuation is is good enough to get back in it. So I mean, and, until then, oh, I mean, no. you see the pops. Look, when you see on the weeklies and all you see these huge wicks see every weekly. time it spikes. Let's go to a weekly. Like zoom yeah. in on let's say the 16th of the 23rd of November, you see a spike, huge yeah. wick. That shows selling pressure up there, guys. Then right after that, the 25th of January, mm -hmm. another spike, selling pressure again. Overhead huge supply, wick. man. There's just too much overhead supply to get it back over those levels. All right. I am being advised that Cannabis Insider is about to go live. Boom, boom. The first ever. The first ever. Mitch, has been fun hanging out with you. You've been on the stream for an hour and a half. Go get a break. Drink some water hey, or something. It's, and, cannabis, um, uh, it's cannabis time, right? It's cannabis time. After cannabis. <laughs> listen, listen up, guys. We've got Cannabis uh, Insider for the next half hour. After that, we've got a new... Um, value investing no no like a fundamental investing show you asked for a fundamental investor someone who can walk you through how to do due diligence you asked we found that person that show debuts five o'clock today eastern time 
uh, right here on Benzinga's YouTube channel. We've got a show with Luke and Flex Trades on at 6. We've got Ruel at 7. And I mentioned around the bell, we're going to do that later on in the week. Uh, I mentioned that this morning. But that's going to be the programming slate for tonight. Uh, so, again, we're going from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm being told I have to get off the stream, so let's do that, guys. Hit, hit that like button. Smash it. Slam it. Do what you have to do. Thank you very much. I'll see you all uh, later for any I'll, I'll be back probably to watch uh, I'm going to watch Canada's but I, I want to be back to watch the uh, the Fundies show at 5